really could have been handled a lot differently than kicking doors in, grabbing guns, and just, you know, say la vie. Tonight's top story, the High River gun grab, and answers are beginning to trickle in as to what went on during the flooding that forced the Alberta town to evacuate last summer. We know the RCMP kicked in doors, they searched homes, they confiscated guns of residents. Well, answers to a formal question by a member of parliament, not quite fulsome. Solomon Friedman joins me now in studio. Solomon, these were order paper questions put by Conservative MP Scott Reed. The RCMP were, are required by law to answer. They didn't really give full answers, did they? Yeah, I think especially when it comes to, you know, answers to a question on an order paper, this actually leaves more questions than answers. There's a lot of obfuscations, a lot of cop talk in there, but really very few solid answers. All right, I want to go over a couple of uh, things on this. Uh, four specific points I want to try and get to in the time that we have. Search teams. Here's a quote from the, uh, the RCMP answer, and it was about, uh, you know, how they left the homes after they searched them. Search teams were directed to secure the residents upon completion of their search. We know that didn't happen. And the other thing that they talked about was minimal damage. So let me bring up the next quote. And they said, if forced entry was required, search teams were directed to cause the least amount of damage possible. We know from our, uh, our, our documentary on High River that that didn't happen. Roll tape. $4,300 just for the door. 50 days wait time to get the door after I order it. I have to pay before I order it. I've already put out twelve dollars to $13,000 since I've been kicked out of my house. Where am I getting $4,000 to put a new door in here? I mean, the way I'm sitting right now, I'm looking at three months before this door is put back in here and locked down properly. They're telling me just put boards up and block it. Well, what does that do? What's, what, what good is that, you know? I mean, a couple boards and, I mean, put a padlock on it. Just fix my door. My garage door was open, unlocked. They could have walked to the side door and walked right through the side door if they just took 20 seconds to to have a look around, you know. But it's much quicker just to knock down the door. Solomon, how can the RCMP get away with claiming they did minimal damage and uh, you know they they minimal force? You know what really boggles the mind here as a criminal defense lawyer, I can tell you I've seen countless times where the RCMP they're conducting some type of investigation. They have the ability to covertly enter, enter and to basically defeat any locking mechanism in Canada. In fact, in this very answer sheet, they said that they engaged the services of local locksmiths. What do you need local locksmiths for if you're kicking down doors? You know, they left untold number of doors. You know, 1,900 doors were breached. And when we say breach, we're not talking about picked. We're talking about being kicked in. So I don't think that claim by the RCMP can really hold water. All right. Uh, several times throughout their answer, they said that uh, as far as the taking of guns, they only took firearms that were in plain sight. And we know from talking to residents that that's not true. They found footprints going all the way through, muddy footprints going all the way through their homes, into be bedrooms, into closets. And, and we were talking about it in, in, uh, in the office. And I said, well, no, it, it, they did only take firearms in plain sight if you use the RCMP logic. So I want to go back to this clip of an RCMP officer explaining how they view plain sight as being in the basement, in the closet, behind some boxes. Roll clip. It could be in, in plain view, it could be under a bed, in a closet, on top of a, uh, a place where somebody uh, could hide, you know, like upon searching uh, for people, uh, if, they, if they see a firearm that is in a closet, maybe if you stand in the middle of the room, you would say it's not in plain sight, but I suppose. As soon as you open the closet door, it becomes in plain sight. All right, so that's an RCMP officer explaining her twisted view of plain sight as we rolled the clip of someone showing where their rifles were when they were taken in a locked home, in a basement, in a closet behind boxes, non-restricted. Does that meet the legal definition in your view of safely stored? Well, it's interesting. Obviously, Sergeant uh, Valley Cat, with all respect to her, has a very different definition of plain sight than does the Supreme Court of Canada. You know, what's, what's important here is to note that there, there's no discussion about whether these firearms, as you said, were being safely stored. As long as a firearm, if it's non-restricted, is secured in some way, either locked in a closet or a box, or it can even be in the middle of a room as long as it's disabled with a secure locking device, it meets the legal definition of safe storage. But to claim that items are in plain sight when you have to take actual investigative steps, you have to search a home, that's, once again, another untenable claim being made by the RCMP. All right, and let's leave with this. The RCMP claimed, or they were asked, tell us how many homes you went back to more than once, because we know from our work 
that they went back several times. Here's what it said. The RCMP is unable to provide a specific number without a manual search of an extensive number of files, which would take excessive amount of resources and time. Uh, 15 seconds left. Are they in contempt of Parliament refusing to answer a question? Well, it's always very shocking when a government body that uh, specifically a paramilitary organization that should be answerable to the people says, I'm sorry, we don't have the time or the energy to answer your request. That's disturbing. All right. Solomon, thanks so much.